Hey guys, uh, another inbox review. This time of a fairly new kit which recently came out for uh, distribution. Uh, it's been in the market about what three four months now. Um, it's Vesta's retooled version. Well, it's not a retool, it's a, a new tool anyway. Either way, if you look at it, of the ubiquitous um, Lockheed Hercules um, military transport. And as we know, this is. Um, been in the skies for many many years a real cold war bird as well um, was in the gulf with the vietnam war um, and many other wars including the gulf war um, and is still used to this day although it's been heavily modified now with the j version uh, with more advanced turboprops and obviously with all the led screens for the control panels in the cockpit now um, but this is the original, one of the original engine versions, which is the C-130H. And um, it's come a long way since the old Airfix kit, which I do remember building way back when, um, when I first got into the hobby. And uh, yeah, that, was, that wasn't a bad kit then, but to be honest with you, I've had a look at this one and it is a vast improvement, to be honest with you. You haven't got to worry about that wing sag with the way they've actually sort of moulded the wings either, so it's very good. The only thing that's not so accurate is the internal workings of the cargo bay, for which a company called Micro Design um, actually do the internal etch brass sets for, as well as the cockpit, as well as the cargo bay and external services. And uh, I think there's also another company that actually does a remould in resin of the actual engines and propellers, if you want to look at it that far. Um, I, for myself, won't be. Um, I'll just be doing the, I've just ordered the actual etch brass set from Micro Design to go on the interior of the cargo bay on this. Although later on, I may well get myself the cockpit set as well. Because some of the surfaces come painted as well, so that's that's something to look out for. Um, and then obviously, um, I mean, Airfix stopped producing it some time ago, so you can still actually get hold of the Airfix kit on eBay. And there's the old ubiquitous Italeri kit as well, but that is just well not cheap let's just put it like that it's not bad um but this one comes a bit better to be honest with you um and i shall be actually when i get around to building this doing it as an early mark c1 version with the raf in the old um is it dark earth and stone color scheme uh, with the black underneath under surfaces and white top on the uh, cockpit there so yeah Anyway, without further ado, uh, we'll get on my inbox with you, but before we do, I, I do remember one year when I went to the old Air Tattoo when it was held at Green and Common, uh, there was a lineup of 25 of these birds um, all along the taxiway just adjacent to the old runway, um, and it was a hell of a sight to see, and this is around about, what, 1981? And um, funnily enough, they did have one aircraft which was just used chiefly by Marshals of Cambridge, still in the old desert camo uh, from its early service career when I was there. So, yeah, it's quite a sight that was, and it's one I shall never forget. Anyway, let's get, as I say, I'm waffling, so let's get on with the inbox review itself. Um, and for the first time, I'm actually using my new phone filming this video, so I hope that it looks nicer, sharper, and clearer. Uh, than the recent videos I've been doing. So anyway, I'm waffling. <laughs> As you can see here, there's a lovely box art illustration of a typical US Herc in on an exercise, uh, ready to drop his troops. Uh, nobody can sort of forget that distinctive shape with the sound of those of, of those um, Allison turboprop engines. Um, it's an immense aircraft. I wouldn't say it's on the same scale as the Galaxy, but it's still an immense aircraft when you're up standing next to it. And if anybody remembers the old Snoopy uh, Herc, if they were living around Guildford around about 1970s, uh, which was used for weather research with the long pointed Peter nose at the front um, and distinctive colour scheme. Um, I think that's uh, preserved at a museum somewhere now, or they're actually refurbishing it, and uh, I think it's at Cosford, I'm not sure, I might be mistaken. 
but they are repainting it in that scheme uh, as it's still around believe it or not uh, so yeah and that used to fly out of Farnborough quite a bit when um, when the RAE was based there so anyway, I'm waffling again <laughs> I'll be saying sitting there going oh for Christ's sake Stuart get on the bloody review yes I will anyway as you can see here, it comes in five different versions, uh, and hence the flags on the bottom there. You've got British version, Japanese, Korean, uh, Polish, and US version, which is depicted on the box art. And if you want the kit number on this one, it is 7321. That's 7321. And for the purposes of this inbox review, I've taken all the sprues out of the bags, to be honest with you. Well, most of them anyway. Again, again on the end here, you've got the general box art. And then obviously your colour call outs on here, which are in Tamiya paint colours, which is handy because I chiefly use Tamiya, or I did. Um, and then obviously you've got a picture of the decals that you've got there, other information in other languages. And then on the opposite side here, you've got all the five colour call outs, which you can see on the side of the box. Okay, right, unlike most of Zvezda's boxes, this is one top opening box. So it comes there, you've got all your sprues inside, which you can see here. Hang on, if I move the camera down, hopefully. There we go. If it's going to say seal. Yeah, there you go. You've got all your sprues in one box, and inside a sealed bag, you've got your clear parts and part of your decals. So, yeah, there you go. So, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten sprues. So that's going to keep you busy. Um, I'll just take the decal sheet out that I've got in, especially for this kit. And I shall mention that to you at the end of this review. And then obviously you've got your instruction sheet along with another decal sheet, which I'll take out. And colour call out sheet, which I'll take out. And then we'll just go through the, in, the actual instruction sheet itself. So I'll just put, put the box over the front there. And as again, it comes in a normal pamphlet form, as is uh, familiar with Zvezda kits. A uh, little bit of a history about the aircraft itself. Um, and inside you've got a sprue tree guide as well, so that if you want to check the, all your parts, you can. Let's make sure they're there. First process, as is per usual with an aircraft kit, is the assembly of the cockpit. First you've got the control yokes, as you can see there. Mainframe on the seat, although, um, as I was saying, uh, Micro Design do do an interior cockpit seat desi uh, design, which is a little bit more detailed, as you want to make the cockpit a little bit more busier, which I will be getting hold of at that stage. Uh, but in the process of this uh, construction, all your internal parts go into the cockpit. You've got your colour guide there for the control panels, etc. And then you've got your side engineer wall there and navigator station. It will go in and obviously you've got your control column right there. Again, with the Micro Design set, they do have a pre-painted uh, control panel anyway. Then obviously you've got the assembly of the crew, if you want to put the crew in there, which makes a pleasant change. And then onto the assembly of the actual crew cockpit compartment and the undercarriage bay goes up straight underneath with a nose wheel but gear bay door. Um, and then obviously you put your figures in and the control panel, oxygen bar bottles go either side. You've got your rear bulkhead where the oxygen bottle goes on there. Bulkheads go into the uh, to, onto the actual floor of the aircraft as you can see for the cargo bay. The main cockpit section is fit to the main fuselage internal workings as you can see here. The access ladder goes in as well. And then obviously whichever version you're doing, you've got the side door here or side uh, um, fuselage compartment. <laughs> and again, on the other side with this little bulge here. But this, believe it or not, on the model that I'm doing is not there. So I'm going to try and cut that off and just sand it smooth. 
Um, once that's done, um, obviously you've got to cut some of the parts in half. It's retained to remove some of the part there. And then pull your interior bulkheads in on the right side of the fuselage and the crew doors, etc. Uh, this is part of the undercarriage bay housing, which goes onto that uh, part particularly. And then obviously after that, on the left side of the fuselage, you put on the um, wheel housings there for the undercarriage. Um, either you can put a glass part or a full part, depending on which version you're doing as well. And then the clear, clear vision panels go in as well. Okay. And then obviously the next process is the same on the other side, as you can see here. And then obviously other internal parts go in for the bulkheads and seating and oxygen panels and the mechanism for the rear cargo bay door. Overhead um, ceiling and um, I think jacks or something where they actually hold in the bulk of the cargo goes in. Again, you've got a colour guide on that which goes onto the roof of the cockpit. The internal part, the fuselage goes in. Again, other parts on the other side, the fairings, etc rear bulkheads etc same again here and obviously internal parts of the actual rear cargo but bay door mechanism as well going bulkhead goes in fuselage is buttoned up and then on to the wings obviously you've got the main wing panel as uh, so i can say you haven't got to worry about the droop the way this is actually molded because it actually keeps the wings straight so your wings are put together etc then it's the assembly of the Allison engines, which you can see here, all detailed and highly skilled there. So that's looking good. And obviously you've got your colour call outs for the main nose hubs, etc. And then onto the fuel tanks, they're assembled. And then you put the engines onto the wing along with the air tanks as well. Then it's the assembly of the rear tail planes and rear tail, obviously depending on which version you're building. You've got two options. And then obviously you put the uh, tail planes onto the main fuselage, rear tail on, and obviously the wings go on, um, and obviously you fit your glazing onto the cockpit, not forgetting to weight your nose at 25 kil kilograms, otherwise if she's going to be a tail sitter, which you don't want. And depending on which version you're building, you've got three nose cones there as an option. All right, once that's done, it's the assembly of the nose wheel, which you can see there, and the gear. That then goes in, along with some fairings and um, airspeed indicators, etc., on the nose. And then the fitment of the main undercarriage units and the fuselage and other lumps and bumps, which go into the rear cargo bay door. And then obviously you've got the, um, uh, all the um, suspension pins, etc., which go into the inner part of the undercarriage bay doors. Then the fitment of the cargo bay door, the mechanism which goes to that as well. And obviously you've got a colour guide to that as well with all the pistons, etc. Um, and then the assembly of the actual wheels, which are weighted, which is good. And then obviously you put all those to the actual main aircraft and then assemble the um, propeller hubs, which you can see here. And you have the option of having the actual uh, rear ramp closed if you want to. I'm going to keep mine open. And then obviously the props go onto the engines. You've got the side hatch here with the door down, which I'm probably going to have. And then obviously you've got your rear ramps on the cargo ramp bay there. That goes on. And then obviously you've got a little sort of uh, radio housing which goes on the top of the fuselage. Whereas the version that I'm building won't have it. And obviously with the RF version that's featured in this kit, it's a C-130P and obviously you can actually fit the refueling probe to the actual main fuselage, so there you go. And that's your aircraft built. And then obviously on here is a guide to where all the stencils go when you get the aircraft painted and then decaled. Okay. Okay. And then you have your colour call outs, which is on a nice sort of enamel, enamel booklet, as it were. Um, the first one off is of the 758th Airlift Squadron of the US Air Force, based at Pittsburgh around about 2007. And I quite like that tail insignia, which is rather nice. And obviously you've got a guide to where the decals go on the actual propeller hubs as well. Okay. 
Now any sort of wires or that, it gives you a guide on how to stretch sprue. So there you go. Next version up is of the Polish Air Force, 14th Airlift Squadron, uh, based at Powitz Air Base in 2010. All overall dark grey by the looks of it. And then this rather colourful camouflage scheme of an aircraft of the uh, Korean Republic Air Force uh, at was it Seongham Air Base 2012. And finally, this rather nice camouflage of a Herc based in Japan with the Royal with the Japanese Air Self Defense Force at Kumaki Air Base around about last year. So yes, that's a very colourful one. I quite like that. Yeah, and then finally on the back here, you've got an RAF uh, aircraft um, of the Lynham Electric Transport Air Wing at Lynham Air Base 1991. Although it doesn't actually indicate what squadron it is, so and that's in the overall dark sea grey, dark green light aircraft grey scheme. And this bird actually took part in the Operation Desert Storm as well. So there you go. And then obviously you got the in decal sheets to go with it as well uh, so there you go right first up we'll have a look at the uh, most essential part which is the kit itself now obviously i'm not going to put every sprue in front of you because we get doubles of some so first off we've got the actual fuselage and as you can see there there's some beautiful panel line detail Exquisite panel line detail. This is quite a thick plastic as well. Um, and I love the way they've actually got the rivets in there as well. And it's all to scale. And the actual internal detail on the undercarriage bay there as well is very, very nice. So it's a beauty, absolute beauty. And it's going to be quite a sizable aircraft, obviously, in 172nd, let alone 148th. Not much detail on the inside, although you have actually got the soundproofing inside and then obviously the internal framework there. As I say, with Micro Design, I've ordered their internal uh, cargo base set, which will actually detail that more authentically. But again, you've got the nice surface texture here with the uh, soundproofing, because obviously this is a noisy aircraft for those Allison turboprops on the go all the time. And um, there unfortunately is a few weld seams inside, but you can just get some putty and sand them out, you know, and they're in the most incredulous places, which unfortunately is in the cockpit, which is a bit of a shame, but there you go. But as I say, it's nothing you can't fix. So there you go. Right, I'm just going to put those up the top. That's that. And then obviously next up, is some of the internal fittings in the cargo bay upstairs you've got the crank housing for the cranes of the cargo which you can see there which is beautifully detailed nicely done there uh, especially with the soundproofing etc and it looked good weathered up and then obviously on here you've got soundproofing parts which go into the internal workings of the actual cargo bay which is rather nice and some of the housing for the mechanism for the cargo bay doors and piston rods which you can see there as well the only thing that is a bit of a disappointment is that the detailing on the actual deck of the cargo bay is rather sparse i would say but again with the micro design set you've actually got more accurate detail which actually will bed on top of this and it'll look much more authentic but not bad all the same okay and then obviously you've got your rear bulkhead which is connected to the cockpit that's a nice little bit of detail there and again, some of the actual framing for going on the ceiling and the piping that housing there. So that's very, very nice. Obviously, you've got your uh, radio heads there for your radar. Side parts of the actual side fuselage are there. But as I say, the surfacing on the soundproofing on these, it just looks exquisite, which you don't get in any other sort of um, kit of the uh, uh, Herc, to be honest with you. But it's beautifully reproduced. So there you go. Right, let's go. And then the next one, let's get out. You got your tanks, so you got your uh, refueling tanks. Well, your, your, your fuel tanks right here, which go on the wings. 
Uh, again, there's some nice detail in the nose wheel bay there, which you can see. And even the panel lines on the side of the actual pods for the uh, main gear is very nice detail panel line on those. And obviously you've got your three noses for the three aircraft, whichever one you're depicting. So do your research, guys, okay? Again, you've got the bulkhead for the cockpit here. There's some nice texture there, which you can see for the soundproofings, which is nice. And then obviously you've got your crew figures there. Hang on, if I can get that to focus. Come on. Is it going to focus? Come on, focus your devil. Is it going to focus? Got to get used to this new phone. Come on, are you going to focus? That's it's not doing it. But, yeah, I mean, I must admit, I mean, the actual uh, mouldings of the crew is very well done as well. Although there's a tiny little bit of flash there, but that's about the only thing I've seen on this kit. So they could be a bonus if you're doing a diorama, really. Obviously, you've got your crew seats right here. I'll turn it up around the right way. Okay, uh, your nose wheel. And some of the mechanism again. But all told, very nice indeed. And obviously you've got your front panel there for the main pilot and co-pilot. But very nice, very nice indeed. Now, next up. Here's your tailplanes. Again, nice panel line detail on those. Nice crisp and clear. The mains part of the actual midsection of the wing. Again, lovely panel line detail on that as well. Wheels, nice work, nicely weighted. Not a bad amount of detail in them either. And obviously these are the side sections of your fuselage, etc. Um, again, there's a nice little bit of soundproofing detail on the inside of those. Um, so yes, very nice indeed. And then I'm just going to give you one of the wings, the bruise with the wings, obviously underneath and the top. Again, lovely panel line detail on it. Nice authentic shape with the old Herc there. That is your seating, the internal workings. Again, there's some nice fabric detail on there as well. So yes, it's quite impressive this kit, I actually have to say. I mean, those Vesta kits weren't all that brilliant at one time, but they certainly are coming on leaps and bounds with these aircraft, I tell you. They really have up their game. And then, obviously, the next one is your props, which you can see there for the Allison Turbo Props. You've got your main um, propeller hub there, front of the engine housing, and air intake. So, yes, and then, obviously, you've got two-part um, exhausts there and there. So there's part of the actual housing for the engine as well. Very nicely done. So yes, very nice indeed. Right, pop that one there, that on the side. And then obviously you've got the main engine housings which here for the Allison Turbo Props. If I pop them around the other way you can see them more accurate and better. Again, nice amount of panel line detail on those as well. So yeah, I'm really impressed with this kit, I have to say. It's a lovely, lovely mould of the Herc. All right. And then obviously in your clear bag is one of your decals and the clear parts. Now I'm going to get the clear parts out, we'll have a look at those. Again, lovely and clear. You can see your hand through those, so that's a good thing. I mean, especially with all the detail that I'm proposing to do for the cockpit, it's going to look absolutely super and it's as clear as a bell. Beautifully moulded. So there you go. Very nice indeed. And obviously the decals. These are your main sort of stencils and serial numbers for your aircraft, etc. Little bit shiny, I have to say. So I'm a little bit dubious about these. I'm not sure how they're going to bed down, but with a good decaling set. Um, Good deckling solution, I should imagine they'll go down nicely. Um, so yes, very nice indeed. And then your main decal sheet, which is in a clear bag. 
that has actually got a very nice texture to it. It's not as shiny and they're a little bit more matte, but very nice indeed. Even for the control panel as well, if you want to put that in. So yes, very nice. Now lights on this tail art here for the US version and obviously for the Polish version you've got a couple of figures there as well. So yeah, very nice. So yeah. I mean this this it generally is not a cheap kit, but for what you're buying for your buck, I have to say, it's worth it, you know. Um I did have my eye on this for a time because when they announced they were going to bring out Herc, I thought, ooh, that's a good idea for a basis for an early Herc, the RAF for me. So that's what I'm decided I'm going to do as I'm going to build this. Um, and I'm sure it will build into a beautiful representation of the Herc itself. Um, I mean, the one I am going to show you that I will do it in is the colour scheme it was in when it first entered service with the RAF, which is this one, the Middle East, Middle East scheme of dark earth and stone, uh, light stone with black undersides, although it was a clear gloss finish as well. And the good thing is, I haven't got to worry about painting the actual ends of the props because you've got the decals for it as well. And this is produced by a company called 26 Decals. So check them out, look up on their website. Um, they do a numerous amount of decals, mainly I would suggest retro airliner schemes because I managed to get a few in for my airliner kits in moustache. Um, but the quality of them is beautiful. Um, I mean, I'm sort of am in an iron between the two, but I'm probably more than likely going to go for the very first colour scheme it came in with a white capped cockpit. Um, it's just so distinctive and funny enough that was the first sort of colour scheme that Airfix put it in when they actually first uh, released the aircraft back in I think the kit back in I think it was around about 69, 70. Um, but this is less known, this was the other scheme it went into afterwards was just again the Midstone Black and then obviously it went into the more familiar um, uh, dark green and dark sea uh, dark sea grey and light aircraft grey scheme but this is the one of the two that I'm going to do it in um, I'm sort of veering a little bit towards this one whereas this one is the one I'm aiming for uh, the very early colour scheme <clears throat> in fact I'll get them out of the bag you can have a look at the quality of the decals if you like um, get them out of the bag. It is because I had a devil of a job trying to get them back in. <laughs> Here we go. There we are. There you go. There's your main serial numbers and a little bit of stenciling there. And then obviously you've got your main decal sheet which is quite matted. So I should imagine they bed down beautifully on those. So yes, very nice. And as I see you've got the ends for the props as well. So that would save a lot of hassles as regards painting. But uh, yeah, sometimes it's worth getting some aftermarket stuff just to sort of boost your air, boost your project really. But all in all, um, it's a lovely, lovely kit and I'm looking forward to as and when I build it. Um, I mean, I couldn't build it here because there's just no space for the ready thing. So it will remain in my stash until such time as I... Uh, properly resume my builds. Uh, when that will be, I don't know. Um, but we, I'm hoping it's not going to be too long. Because um, I must admit, I do miss, I haven't been on lockdown since December, I have missed getting on the bench, uh, like I did at the old place. Um, but uh, that's the way it goes sometimes, guys. Uh, and I hope I'm still keeping you entertained with the inbox reviews anyway. <laughs> So there you go, that is, if I put everything back in the box, I'm just trying to get it back in the box, he says. There we go. Okay. Whoops, I lost my lamp then. Um, right, let's pop that all back in the box. But as I say, it's, 
mean, for the, what you're paying, you're getting a good quality kit. Um, you can improve on it if you want to, as I've suggested. Um, so there you go. But uh, yeah, go out and get one, guys. If you like the Herc, if you love the Herc, and you want an Ascension sort of transport aircraft in your collection, then I would suggest strongly that you go for this kit. Um, it's a beauty. Um, so there you go. Anyway, we're at 30 minutes, which is long enough. I hope you enjoy the inbox review. Um, I can't recommend it more enough. I don't know what it's like to build. I mean, I will find that in the fullness of time. Uh, but I have to say, it's Vesta's releases just lately are really up there. Really up there. Or well, they're getting up there. And the fact that they're starting to sort of go for more Western aircraft is a bonus. So, yeah, you go. Um, mind you, I wish somebody would bring out an injection molded uh, model of the old uh, short Belfast. Now, that's something. That would be something. And that's bigger than this. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I mean, the only source you can get now at the moment is either an old Anna Grand vac form or a vac form from Welsh models in 1144, which I'm aiming to try and get hold of at some stage. Um... But yeah, go out and get this Vesta C-130H Herc. It's a lovely, lovely kit by the looks of it. So there you go. Anyway, that's it for now, guys. Uh, so in the meantime, stay safe, wear your mask, wash your hands, and don't be silly. All right, play by the rules and we'll all get there. It's, it's getting better. The way things are going, the things are heading in the right direction at present, although it could change. So... There is a little glimmer of light up there and the, and the beat has like spring, everything's starting to bud and come out again. So yeah, there you go. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap up here. In the meantime, get kit crazy, happy modeling, and I will speak to you again very, very soon.